Hey everybody, it's Daniel once again with Supernatural Freedom in Christ. I'm coming to you from Bayview Park once again. It's December the 27th, two days after Christmas. And to all my YouTube viewers, I just want to wish you a belated Merry Christmas and I want to wish you a very prosperous and a Happy New Year as well. Today I want to begin by asking you a question. And here's the question. What is the primary source of all demonic activity and the occult? Well, the answer to that is witchcraft. Witchcraft actually is the universal religion of fallen man. Now, you may ask the question, when did witchcraft actually enter into the world? Well, actually, if you go back to the Bible and go back to Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3, that's when witchcraft actually entered in. What happened was, was that God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he told them, he says, you can eat of every tree in the garden except for one, and that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because the day that you eat of that tree, you will surely die. So God placed them in the garden, and of course along came Satan, and he began to tempt Eve, and he got her to look at that tree and saw that it was good for, for food to eat, and, of course, she fell to the temptation, and she sinned, and then she gave to Adam, and he sinned. And as a result, witchcraft entered into the world. You say, well, what's that got to do with witchcraft? Well, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, verse 23, that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and rebelled against God, that is when witchcraft entered into the world. Now, in many parts of the world, the open practice of witchcraft has, unchanged, has been unchanged for centuries. In nations with a Christi Christian history, such as America, Christ, uh, witchcraft has adapted itself to the culture and takes certain special forms, which we will be looking at later in this, in this uh, message. Did you know that some people are practicing witchcraft today and they don't even realize that they're practicing witchcraft? And I'll prove that to you in just a little bit. But here's another question. What is it that actually draws people to witchcraft? Well, we live in a day and age in which most religion is dry, dull, and powerless. And what people are looking for is power. They want power to influence people. They want power to make wealth. They want power to get even with those people that did them wrong. They want power to be able to control other people. And that is exactly what witchcraft offers. It offers people supernatural power to do things they, that they couldn't ordinarily do in their own power. If you've ever watched a horror movie in which Satan or some other evil entity, such as an alien or a demon, uh, is, is the main character, you would be amazed at how they all seem to have supernatural power to perform miraculous things that, they, that nobody in their right, right uh, mind or right being could, could create. And that is what people are looking for today. They're looking for power. Now, one purpose that's common to all forms of witchcraft is control. Now, we'll see this a little bit later. Whenever any religious activity seeks to control other people, the influence of witchcraft is actually at work. And we're going to see how that there is actually witchcraft taking place in the church today. Now, let's talk about the primitive practice of witchcraft. It normally contains the following elements. Number one, it contains a priesthood, such as a witch doctor, a medicine man, or even an Indian shaman. It also has a ritual or lit liturgy that it goes by. Uh, it also contains a sacrifice, usually either an animal sacrifice or perhaps even uh, a human sacrifice. And witchcraft also has some characteristic form of music. Often it, it has incantations or drum beats. But in the modern world, Satan has began to use heavy metal or acid rock and new age movement, new, new age music to uh, get people involved in witchcraft. And then number five, some form of covenant binding the participants to one another or to whatever satanic being is the focus of their activity. All these things are found in the practice of witchcraft. So what are the four main aims of witchcraft? Number one is to contact a higher spiritual being often regarded as malevolent 
or evil, such as a demon spirit or Satan. Number two is to control the forces of nature, such as wind and rain. Number three, it's aim, witchcraft's aim is to ward off sickness and infertility. As in Africa, if you go to Africa, whenever a woman is barren, what does she do? She goes to the local witch doctor and she gets him to cast a spell to help her to have a child. And then number four is to control other human beings. Uh, in, in Africa, uh, they use witchcraft to terrify their uh, enemies in battle. Or they even want it, may even use it to uh, produce sexual desire in one person toward another person. These are all some of the things that witchcraft does. Now, what are the four levels of modern witchcraft? We're talking about modern witchcraft now in America and in other countries. Now, it contains four levels, operates on four levels, and those levels are one, open, number two, underground, such as covens, number three, disguise, such as within sorcery in the church, and number four, a work of the flesh. These are the four levels of witchcraft in, in the modern world today. So let's look at each one of these for just a few minutes. Let's talk about open. Open witchcraft, operating in its true nature, witchcraft teaches and practices the worship of Satan. The Church of Satan has its own website on the internet which presents it as a respectable religion. However, those people who have been in Satanism and have come out of Satanism will tell you that the central satanic ceremony is what they call a black mass. It's a mockery of the Christian communion service. And they, they do everything backwards and they do everything to just make a mockery of what the Bible teaches about the Christian communion service. The dominant motive is a deliberate conscious hatred and rejection of Jesus Christ. The main enemy of witchcraft is the Christian church. So that's level one. Let's talk about level two, underground. When I talk about underground, I'm talking about covens. Witchcraft covens usually meet at night and offer their sacrifices and initiate new members at nighttime. A lot of times they will, they will go out when the moon is shining bright and they will do their uh, rituals it's a lot of times in the nude because that's a part of what they do. And one central element is sacrifice. Usually the sacrifices are animals such as a dog, a cat, a rat, or some other animal. But whenever possible, they will even offer human sacrifices and especially a baby if they can get, get a baby to sacrifice. So who is the God of witchcraft? Well, we know that the God of witchcraft is Satan. And what attracts people to Satanism is the offer of supernatural power. Now, let's look at level three, what I call disguised witchcraft. There are many forms that witchcraft uses to entice people into it, into the worship of Satan. So we're going to look at just a few examples. Number one, we want to look at rock music. Rock music is one of the main channels that witchcraft uses today to draw people into it. The combined elements at a rock concert open the way for demons. For example, a deafening music with an insistent repetitive beat, lyrics that range from mindless to blasphemous, strobe lights that are constantly flashing, fluctuating in color and in intensity, all these things break down a person's ability to reason or exercise moral judgment especially if alcohol or drugs aren't involved. And, uh, and what I mean by that is uh, when I was in my 20s, I'm 70 now, but when I was in my 20s, I went to one rock concert in my entire life. It was a three-dog night concert. And uh, it, was, it was interesting. It really was interesting. The music was loud. There was smoke pouring out from the stage. You had the strobe lights. And, but you know what everybody was doing while they were, were singing their music and all this kind of stuff? Everybody was out laying down on the floor, passing joints around, smoking dope and, and getting high, and, and even had alcohol. So that opens up your mind for demonic oppression and demonic possession and dem demonization. Now, here's another, another way that Satan entices people into witchcraft, and that's New Age cults, religions and practices. The fifth column operation of witchcraft is continually expanding. One major front is the strange assortment of religions and philosophies grouped under the banner of the New Age. Many Christians are being drawn into the New Age and don't even realize it. For example, 
Uh, many people want to stay healthy and they want to go natural and use natural things. So they go to their local health store, not realizing that many of your health stores, if they're not run by Christians, have all kinds of new age music. They have new age uh, teachings. They have a lot of your uh, element, the things that you get there have been like Indian stuff has, from India, have, been, have a curse put on them. And there's a lot of new age involved in the, uh, some of the places today. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. My wife and I went to a place here in Pensacola. It's a health food store, supposedly a health food store, and it sells alcohol, so I don't know how that could be a health food store. But they call themselves a health food store. And around Halloween time, we went in there to pick up something because we use a lot, of, a lot of natural stuff. And they had a little rack that had calendars, different calendars that you could buy for the year 2023. And one of the calendars was a witchcraft calendar. And it had all kinds of witchcraft symbols and everything on the front of it. And so they, the, the new age has tried to creep in that way. Many people are drawn into the occult and opened up to demonic forces through hypnosis. A lot of people think hypnosis is harmless. Doctors use it. Psychiatrists and psychologists use hypnosis. You can watch somebody being hypnotized on TV and they make them do silly things and you think it's just a form of entertainment. But when you allow your mind to be taken over by that hypnotist, you're actually opening up your mind to demonic forces that can come in and enter into your mind. Another occult practice that opens the door to demons is acupuncture. A lot of people think acupuncture is okay because it works. Many doctors promote it nowadays because they say it actually works. But if you study what, what the truth is behind acupuncture and the history behind it, it has an occult background. And, and you will find out that acupuncture will never ultimately promote the well-being of those who practice it. So the fourth level is this. It's a work of the flesh or sinful nature. We've already looked at the three main forms of witchcraft as a supernatural force. Now we're going to look at the root. What is the root of witchcraft? Uh, it is the least recognized in operation, but it is found throughout society and in the church. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, Paul lists the works of the flesh. And right in the middle of that whole list of the works of the flesh, he mentions this. He mentions idolatry and witchcraft. So witchcraft is actually a work of the sinful flesh. So the root of witchcraft is our fallen, rebellious, sinful nature. This nature manifests itself, itself in efforts to control other people. In actuality, that's what witchcraft is all about. It's about control. And there are three ways that people use to control other people. And this is what actually makes up witchcraft. And this is why people can practice witchcraft and don't even realize that they're practicing witchcraft. But the three main things that make up witchcraft is manipulation, intimidation, and domination. Domination, of course, means absolute control. Weaker people try to manipulate people. Stronger people try to intimidate people. But the ultimate goal is to dominate someone else. And that's witchcraft. Anytime you have these three things together, intimidation, manipulation, and domination, you have a form of witchcraft, whether it's what you consider to be witchcraft or not. Many family relationships actually practice witchcraft and don't even know that they're doing it. For example, some husbands intimidate their wives by fits of rage or even actual violence and abuse. They, they attempt to control their wives through intimidation. Uh, many wives, because they're weaker, will seek to manipulate their husbands through uh, tears, through hurt feelings, or even by withholding sex from the husband. Parents frequently intimidate or manipulate their children, but children have also become experts at manipulating their parents. All this is a form of witchcraft, whether you realize it or not. One main tool of manipulation or witchcraft is guilt. Let me give you an example. Suppose a mother says to her son, Honey, if you love mother, you'll go to the store and you'll buy me a pack of cigarettes. You see, that's manipulation. He's trying to make him feel guilty because if he doesn't go get her the cigarettes, then he, she, she believe, she's getting him to believe that he doesn't really love her. And that is a form of witchcraft. 
Once we learn to recognize the desire to control other people as an evil manipulative force, we will see that it work in many different areas. It's even at work in religion and in churches. It may be the way a preacher asks for an offering. You ever heard a preacher say something like this? Well, God has shown me that there are 10 people here today that are going to give a thousand dollars. Or he, he could show you a bunch of tear-jerking pictures of, of children in a foreign land who are, or who are really skinny and, and, and need food to eat. And, and what they're doing is they're trying to make you feel guilty and trying to get you to give through making you feel guilty. And that is a form of witchcraft in the church. Once we recognize that these devices are disguises of witchcraft, we realize that we're being continually dominated and manipulated by them. Now, listen to this repeatedly yielding to any fleshly lust can open the way for a demon to enter in. This applies to all the works of the flesh. For example, if a person lies continuously, eventually they will get a lying demon spirit in their, inside their soul and inside their body. If a person uh, practices fornication all the time, they will get a demon of lust or a demon of fornication. Uh, envy or jealousy you will get demon spirits corresponding to these particular sins. And the same is true of witchcraft. People who habitually use manipulation or intimidation to control other people will eventually receive a demon of witchcraft. Now, the demon of witchcraft can also work in many other kinds of relationships. Sometimes a pastor will seek to control uh, his people in his church and not only his people, but his staff. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I was a member of a church in Anchorage, Alaska. I'm an, I was an ordained minister, and I was working in this church. I was an associate pastor. In fact, it was a huge church. We had about 1,500 members, and I was the 13th associate pastor. Now, one of the things that we as associate pastors were required to do was that every Sunday we had to get one person to make a profession of faith in Christ we had to get them to come to church the next Sunday. We had to get them to walk down the aisle and make a profession of faith in Christ. And we had to get them to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. If we didn't do this with at least one person every week, the pastor deducted $50 from our paycheck. Now, I didn't realize it back then because I didn't know what I know about witchcraft now, but that was actually a form of witchcraft, a form of manipulation, trying to get you to... Uh, force people into making a profession of faith in Christ. But let me say this. There is a way out of witchcraft. There is a way. People who have exercised the power Satan has given them while they participated in satanic worship must be very determined if they want to be set free. If you have actually been involved in Satanism or witchcraft, you can be set free, but it's, it's not going to be easy. The spiritual struggle will be very intense. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Derek Prince, who is a former deliverance minister who is now in heaven, tells how, in, a, in a book that he wrote how he and his wife were once part of a small group ministry ministering to a young woman who had been actually a priestess of Satan. She had repeated and repented and wanted to be set free. At one point, she uh, showed the group her ring that symbolized her marriage to Satan. Well, they were able to convince her to take that ring off, but when she took that ring off, the demon spirits that were within her made her take that ring and swallow it. Well, there was a man there that God gave a special gift of faith, and he commanded that woman to regurgitate that ring back up. And you know what happened? It happened just like he said. She regurgitated that ring back up. He picked that ring up and he threw it into a nearby lake. Now, did the woman get free? Eventually she did, but there were some things that she had to do. She had to make a profession, a public confession to a group of Christians, and she had to burn every garment that she had ever worn while worshiping Satan. And as a result, she got her deliverance. But once you get delivered from this, that's not the end of everything. For you see, any person who has made an unreserved commitment to Satan is still regarded by Satan as his property. And he will do everything he can in his power to get you back into witchcraft. 
Uh, he will send every demon at his control, and he will do everything, put every kind of pressure that he can on you to allow those demons to come back in. That's why it's very important that a person find a good church that believes in deliverance, become a member of that church, and become actively involved in that church. That a person needs to fill his mind and fill his heart with the things of God, the Word of God, praise and worship music. All these things will help keep the darkness out. But it's not going to be an easy battle. So in conclusion, I want to say today that there is only one absolute standard of truth. And that is the Word of God. Anything that does not line up with the Word of God is not good, is not of God, is, is of the devil. We must be on our guard. Even with people who use scriptures, we've got to be careful. Because even Satan, when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he quoted scriptures to Satan. So not everybody that uses scripture is, a, is, a, is from God. My wife was telling me about a story that she saw on Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, about this woman who was, he was wanting to be saved. And, and this guy came to her and he took the Bible and he showed her all this stuff in the Bible. But what she didn't realize was that this man was actually a, a witch. And she ended up actually going insane and had to go into an insane asylum. So the Bible says this, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You say, what is truth? I've mentioned this in a previous message, but truth, there are three things that are called truth in the Bible. The Bible says that Jesus is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Jesus is truth. And Jesus can set you free. Not only is Jesus truth, but the Bible, it also says that the Word of God, the Bible, is truth. Uh, every word of the Bible is truth. There's no errors in it. There's no, uh, there's no sin in the Bible. I mean, it talks about sin in the Bible, but the actual words, everything in it is truth. And then the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of truth. So it's obedience to Jesus. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Jesus says, seek me. Uh, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. God says you need to seek me with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. When you start doing this, you can be completely free from uh, witchcraft and from demonic activity in your life. So you shall know the truth and the truth shall make, make you free, but you have to obey the truth or you will never see freedom from witchcraft and freedom from demon spirits in your life. Well, folks, that's all I have for you today. I hope you've learned something. I hope something that I've said in this message will, will, will help you in your life. If you have any questions about witchcraft, feel free to contact us at supernaturalfreedominchrist at gmail.com. We'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. And so don't forget now, the new year is right around the corner. And I wish every one of you a very prosperous new year. And I'll tell you how you can really have a prosperous new year. Put God first in your life. Seek Him with all your heart, soul, and mind, and all your strength. And, uh, and fill your mind and your heart with the things of God. And you can have the best new year that you've ever had. And I, and I pray that will be what will happen for you as a believer in Christ. If you're not a believer in Christ and you want to know how to be saved, you can contact us here at Supernatural Freedom in Christ and we can take the Word of God and we can show you how that you can know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior and, you're going, and that you're going to heaven when you die. Well, that's all I have for today, friends. Uh, I just remember, I love you. I really do. I love all my viewers and, uh, and I pray God's richest blessings on all of you. And until we meet again uh, uh, next week, uh, God bless, and you have a wonderful new year, and praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs>